In 1960, deep in Tanzania's Olduvai Gorge, Mary and Louis Leakey made a discovery that would change our understanding of human history. Among the layers of ancient earth, they uncovered a small jawbone, teeth, and hand bones. These remains, dated to around 1.75 million years ago, belonged to a new species that would shake the scientific world. The Leakey family named it Homo habilis, which means handyman. This was the first member of our genus, Homo. It marked a turning point in evolution. The moment when brains started to grow, tools began to shape our world, and early humans took their first steps toward becoming us. Homo habilis lived between 2.4 and 1.5 million years ago. They weren't confined to just one area. Fossils have been found across sub-Saharan Africa, from Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania to Kubi Fora in Kenya, the Omo Valley in Ethiopia, and down to South African sites like Swartkrans and Sturkfontein. They stood about 1.2 to 1.5 meters tall, roughly 4 to 5 feet, and weighed around 30 to 50 kilos. Physically, they were still small, more like earlier Australopithecines than modern humans. But their brains told a different story. One key trait set Homo habilis apart, their brain size. On average, they had a cranial capacity of around 640 cubic centimeters. That's a major leap from the 440 cubic centimeters seen in Australopithecus, though still smaller than Homo erectus, 930 cubic centimeters, or modern humans, 1,350 cubic centimeters. Some individuals, like OH7, had a brain size of 680 cubic centimeters, suggesting improving intelligence and problem-solving skills. These larger brains may have supported basic planning, memory, and communication. Homo habilis had a strange blend of features. Their skulls were thin-walled and more rounded than earlier species, with smaller teeth and flatter faces. Yet their arms were still long and their fingers slightly curved, traits more common in tree-dwelling apes. One of the most exciting finds came from the hand bones of OH7. They revealed something remarkable, a precision grip like ours. This allowed Homo habilis to grasp and control objects with great accuracy, perfect for making and using tools. And that's where the real story begins. Homo habilis is closely linked to the Oldowan tool industry, the oldest known stone tools, dating back to 2.6 million years ago. These tools were simple but revolutionary. They were made by striking one stone against another to produce sharp flakes. The result? Two tools. A core, used for chopping, and a flake, used for cutting meat, plants, and more. This method, called hard hammer percussion, required skill. They had to pick the right type of stone, strike it just right, and know what they were trying to create. It was technology in its earliest form. These early tools were incredibly useful. Cut marks on animal bones show they were used to butcher meat, lightly scavenged from predator kills. Bones were cracked open for marrow, a rich energy source. There's also evidence they used tools to process plants, like tubers or roots, strip bark or dig into termite mounds, and defend themselves against predators. Older one tools were basic, but they gave Homo habilis access to new foods and an evolutionary edge. Their teeth were smaller than those of their Australopith ancestors, with thinner enamel and flatter chewing surfaces. This suggests a softer, more varied diet. They likely ate meat that was scavenged, not hunted, roots and tubers that were dug up using tools, and finally fruit, leaves, seeds, and maybe insects. Their ability to adapt their diet to changing environments helped them survive as the African climate became more unpredictable. We don't know much about their social lives, but there are hints. The presence of tool-making sites suggests group activities, perhaps food sharing 
or teaching others how to make tools. The complexity of their tools implies learning and memory, possibly even early communication. While it's unlikely they had language, they may have used gestures, facial expressions, or vocal calls to share information. These behaviors may have laid the foundation for later human social structures. The world Homo habilis lived in was anything but stable. Climate studies show that around two million years ago, environments like Olduvai Gorge were dynamic. There were fern meadows, palm-filled woodlands, grassy plains, and even desert-like areas. Fires, floods, and shifting ecosystems were common. To survive, early humans needed to be flexible, clever, and mobile. Homo habilis likely moved between habitats, using tools to exploit resources and avoid danger. By around 1.76 million years ago, Aldoan tools began to be replaced by Aculean tools, introduced by Homo erectus. These included more advanced tools like hand axes, which required greater planning and skill. This transition reflects a big step in human evolution, showing how technology evolved as brains grew and intelligence deepened. Some even question if Homo habilis truly belongs in the Homo genus. Its long arms and ape-like body suggest it may have been more like Australopithecus than previously thought. But one thing is clear, Homo habilis played a crucial role in our story. Homo habilis marks the beginning of everything that makes us human. Bigger brains, smaller teeth, the use of tools, flexible diets, social behavior. They were a transitional species, bridging the gap between ape-like ancestors and more human-like descendants. They didn't build fires, they didn't speak in language, they didn't leave behind art, but they started something. They took the first steps and they lit the fuse. The discovery of Homo habilis in Olduvai Gorge was a turning point in science. It showed that human origins were deeply rooted in Africa and that tool use and intelligence have been part of our story for millions of years. With every new fossil and every new technology, like 3D scans or isotope analysis, we learn more, but much about Homo habilis is still unknown. And that's what makes them so fascinating. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this look into our ancient past, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, goodbye.